Alright, hello. Aldo Figueroa here, and in this demonstration I'm going to show you how you could create a vector portrait using both Photoshop and Illustrator. Most of the work is going to be constructed within Illustrator. We'll be using Photoshop to make some adjustments to this image. Uh, within this tutorial, uh, it's assumed that you already know how to use first Illustrator, but also know how to use the pencil tool and also the pen tool and of course some of the other basic defaults uh, basic tools such as the direct and direct selection tools how to switch between stroke and fill colors so on and so forth uh, but this is uh, the end result of what it's going to look like I'll walk you through in certain sections on how to how I do some of these techniques later on I will then speed up the process so that you don't necessarily see me doing a one-to-one -one, uh, tutorial because that could take long Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we do, a couple things that I want to point out is that I am using a Mac computer, so that means that if I happen to mention some of the keyboard shortcuts, such as Command on a PC, that would be Control. If I say Option, that would be Alt. If I say Delete, that would be Backspace. So those are some couple of things. Um, I will try to point them out. Uh, also, I am using a, the Adobe Photoshop CS6 and Illustrator CS6. If you have an older version, such as a CS5 or CS4, for the most part, the techniques that we're going to go over are the same on older versions. So don't feel that you need to have the CS6 version of this software. Uh, also, we're going to be opening up uh, using an image. I try to suggest that you get a high resolution image as possible. For this demonstration, we're going to be using this image of Rachel Cyan. This is an image that I found on Flickr. I did a search for portraits that fell under the Creative Commons license. So I do want to give credit to Rachel Cyan for this image. It's a lovely photo. A couple things that I like about it is I, I do like this angle. Uh, but for this demonstration it's important that I wanted to have something that has some hair that's uh, in front of her face but also like oh, you can see over here that's also in the back of the face because especially uh, when drawing portraits of uh, people with long hair uh, it's you need to consider how to place these layer wise so this is the image try to get as high resolution as image as possible the higher the resolution it's easier it's going to be on you because you don't have to use uh, your own artistic interpretation to fill in some of these details you'll be able to see them in the photo uh, another thing that I want to point out is that I am using a Wacom Cintiq it's, this is my new Cintiq 13 HD it's a great product uh, check out my other videos but I do suggest that you use some sort of graphic tablet or drawing tablet uh, it could either be an Intros the Intros line, the Bamboo line, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Wacom. There's lots of different alternatives. Whatever works for you, that's what you should be using. But definitely you should want to use something that gives you that input, such as a, a drawing tablet, uh, a graphics tablet, um, something more than a mouse, or definitely not the trackpad on your laptop. Alright, so I'm going to open up this image in Photoshop. So I'm just going to drag and drop in Photoshop CS6. And I want to save this as a PSD. Right now it's a JPEG. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'm going to call this one the Vector Portrait Demo. Create. And I want to change this one as a PSD. Save it in the Photoshop format. The reason I want to save it in the Photoshop format is because I'm going to be adding some layers. I'm going to change some of the color to this image that's going to help me to draw with an illustrator. So I want the Photoshop document. I'm going to go ahead and tell it save. And great, that's all we have to do right now. So now let's switch into Illustrator. I'm going to go to File, New, because I want to create a new document. Now for my classes where I teach this technique, I have them print out um, or create an artboard of 15 by 20 which when you print will neatly print across four sheets of letter uh, size paper now if you're going to just do this for yourself you can, that doesn't matter um, you know just it, it is important to make note of the artboard so I'm gonna go ahead and do that 
So say for example, if this was for my class, I'd want the width of 15 by 20 or 20 by 15. You could change it if you want portrait or landscape mode by pressing one of these once you have the, the ratios in. And so say for example, you know what, I'm gonna, I want this as a portrait mode. Great, so here is my settings. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it OK. And remember, this is setting your artboard. Let's go ahead and save this file right now. File, save as. I'm gonna to navigate to that folder I just created, which was the vector portrait demo. I'm gonna call this uh, my vector portrait. Great, make sure it's in the Illustrator format. I'm gonna tell it save. Now you do get this window asking if you want to save it in which version of Illustrator. Uh, Adobe has gotten better in that it does allow you to save it into an, an older legacy format. So I'm just going to leave it in CS6. But if you say, for example, if, um, if you're in a lab setting where you're working in CS6 but at home you have CS5, you probably want to change it to 5. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. And w first thing I want to do I want to, within this layer one, I want to bring in that image. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm not going to open it. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to tell it Place. Now navigate to that PSD file that you just saved. Very important, make sure that link is turned on. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to Place, and it places this image. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it. I'm going to hold down Shift. And you can see that we have these transform controls around it. I'm going to hold down Shift. What this does, this allows me to maintain scale. If I hold down Shift and Option, it's going to scale from the center point. So what I want to do right now, I'm just, I'm just scaling this. It's kind of hard to see, but I do have this artboard. I'm trying to put this portrait within here. Now, I could always change this later. I'm going to hold down shift. Let me try to fit this proportion in here somehow. Okay, that works for right now. Now, what's going to be important is that when I zoom in 100%, I want to be able to to really see these details. You can see right here, if you're looking at this video at 100%, the image starts to get a little bit pixelated, so I am going to use some artistic license to fill in some of these details, but that's okay. So let me zoom out, and what I want to do is let's lock this layer. I'm locking it so that this layer, one, I can't edit on this layer, I don't move my image, so on and so forth. Uh, but let's rename this layer. I'm going to change this name from image one to, or layer one, to my image. Great. Now let's create a new layer. Now the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to create an outline of, a, it's almost like a silhouette of her face. Then after that, I'll create another base layer for her hair on a top layer. On a bottom layer, I'll create this detail. So I am going to, because I, if you look at her face, there's some really smooth details for this, to get the best control for that, I'm going to use the pen tool. So if you don't remember how to use the pen tool, please refer to my previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here. And oh, let me get rid of the fill. I don't want the fill. Great. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm pressing Command plus to zoom in. And I want to create this nice outline right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pin tool to create that shape. I'm holding down Option to switch to my my Convert Anchor Point tool. I'm just going to click here. That gets rid of the handle that I have here. Now It's hard to see, but there's eyelashes here. So I'm just going to click right here. Those eyelashes will cover up that shape. So right now, I'm just going to go around trying to get as best a possible shape that I can. You can see that um, it was too far. So as I'm holding down the mouse button or clicking on my tablet, I'm going to 
I'm press and hold down the space bar, I can move where I'm placed this anchor point. I'm going to let go of the space bar without letting go of the mouse button or off of my tablet with my stylus. And I could reshape that. So, great. And hold down Option to get rid of this handle here. And you can see I really like to zoom in. That's why I want a high res image. So here we go. And now you can see right here, I don't want to, well, I could break it. Sure, let's just break it or get rid of it. Again, use your own artistic license. I'm going to now zoom out a bit. And right here, what I'm going to do, even though there isn't a line, I'm going to cut across somewhere through here. And always remember that your images that you use, they are references, not blueprints. You know, I sometimes mention this in my class sometimes. It's like they ask, my students ask, what do you mean they're a reference, not a blueprint? A reference meaning that you're using this to help you to, to get your drawing. A blueprint would mean that it needs to follow the specifications in order for it to be correct. There we go. Okay, now let's zoom out. Sure, we'll create something right here. And because her hair is going to cover the rest of her head, you know, it doesn't matter where I place these. I'm going to click right there. And great. And what I'm going to do, just to show you, I'm going to switch from the, f the stroke to a fill color. So here I have this shape. Uh, let's see. Let me bring my layers back up so you could see this hide the image All right great now I want to let's see I'm not done I'm gonna change this color to a light gray when I'm starting off I like to use monotone colors I add the colors later so let me go ahead and rename this from layer 2 to maybe just face or sometimes people what base color Face base. I like that. I'm going to hide this. Because now what I want to do, um, here, you know what? I'm going to select it and I'm going to switch it to a stroke. I'm going to lock it for right now because I don't want to be able to edit this. On a new layer, I'm going to now make a tracing of the hair. Now, if you look at the hair, it's like we don't see any details on the inside. That's okay. Uh, what I want to do, I'm going to switch back into Illustrator because I lose some detail out here. I don't know what's umbrella and what is the hair. So let's go ahead and save this. Command S. I want to switch back into Photoshop. And what I'm going to do, I am going to create an adjustment. I'm going to click on this button down here in the layers. And I'm just going to create a brightness and contrast adjustment. Turn on Legacy. And... I'm going to zoom out so I could see some of the image. I'm going to increase the brightness and also some of the contrast. You can see that's helping me see more of these details here. Now don't worry about the interior details. I'm not con concentrating on those just yet. So I could see some of this right here. There's those details. I want to definitely be able to see the hair. I'll say there. I'm going to save this file now. Command S. Uh, it wants to know maximize compatibility for older versions of Photoshop. Sure. Don't show this again though. Okay. Now check this out. When I switch back into Illustrator. Hey! It gives you a message. Some files are missing or modified in the links panels. Would you like to update them now? Yes! Yes, I do. 
and you're going to see that it's going to bring those changes that you've made in the previous file. This is going to come in really handy. All right, now at this point, I made sure to use the pen tool to create this nice outline around the face, but for her hair, what I want to do, I am going to, let's see, I'll probably use some of the pen tool to create a path right here to create some of this stuff, but some of this other stuff, you know what, I'm just going to draw with the pencil tool. So I'm going to be switching back and forth. 